Hello and welcome to this video. A few days or weeks ago, there was an update for the LEGO Spike app, which introduced a new set and a new, few new features, but now there has also been an update for the LEGO Mindstorms Road Inventor app. And I visited the app in the Microsoft App Store because there's usually a very good change log. And first of all, there was an update for the Help Center. We will get to the updates in the app soon, which is only available in English. And there you can find instructional videos and other descriptions. So they organized it a bit better and they made it, made it a bit more obvious. Also, now there's a really good new feature, which was really missing from the beginning, but now it's there. And that's the possibility to send communications or to send messages from one hub to the next hub. We will test this feature today as well. I prepared something to hubs which can send messages to each other. And there's also been a few new options for the organization of the projects and a new hub update. But now let's get to the app. Here we can find a new icon and that's for the help function. I also make a tutorial series for the LEGO Mindstorms robot inventor. You can find it here. So you can also use the tutorial, but here are a few official instructions by LEGO for all of the stuff. And I think that it's pretty good because back then it was hidden in the settings tab and I don't think that anyone actually found it. But now let's get to the projects tab, which should be organized a bit better. I'm not sure about the changes and I don't think that they are that relevant. But here's an option to sort by date, name, and stuff like that. And you also have a search bar. And now let's get to the big new update, the hub to hub communications. Here on the bottom, you can find additional blocks, and there are the experimental controller inputs. But now there's also another experimental feature, and that's the hub to hub communication block. And you can react if a signal is being received, and we can read the signal or the contents of the signals, and we can send a signal. I won't explain it in detail in this video because it will be part of the tutorial series that I'm making. But uh, I think that we can also send arrays or lists because this is a round input and I think that lists use round inputs as well. Basically, the messages are sent to all of the other hubs and then the hub can decide, depending on the name of the signal, if it should react to that or if it should read the message or if it shouldn't read the message. And you can create new messages or new signals. You should always create a new signal on the beginning that you use. And then you can react to that. This program has two parts, basically. The sender part, and it's on both of the hubs. So it's exactly the same program and the sender hubs send the message. When a button is being pressed, they send one, and after it's uh, released, it should send zero, but it seems like I made a mistake. Anyways, the uh, they will, will first send one and then zero, or minus one if it's the right button. And then the hub or the other hub can receive that signal, and depending on the value of the signal, it can turn on a light. So now let's check it out. I will start the hubs. Again, exactly the same program is on both of the hubs. And now I can press a button here. And you see that it really blinks. Sometimes the camera might not be fast enough to discover that, but I can tell you that it works and it works each time. You might get or you might have the idea to send signals in a loop, but be a bit cautious with that because if you send too many signals at once, you can basically create a traffic jam and then the signals might have a bit of a delay. But that was it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.